YouTube, my name is Jack, and today we're going to talk about something really interesting that I wish got more discussion, which is how to navigate consent culture in initiatory, secret, religious, or magical traditions. Um, and this is something that applies, obviously, to initiatory Wicca. I'm approaching it from a Wiccan perspective, but it does not only apply to Wicca, because there are lots of other sorts of initiatory traditions, ranging from African diaspora religions to Freemasonry, uh, that have to wrestle with a similar sort of question. And the basic question is this. You know, we live in the 21st century in a time where consent is a really important sort of foremost value in a lot of the spaces that we inhabit. And that's not just sexual consent, that's consent as a general principle understood regarding sort of respect for the autonomy of other people and their right to decide what does and does not happen to them. So just to take a really simple mundane example, you know, if you're at an event with other people whom you don't know very well, you don't, or at least it's, it's not really great to go around just hugging them without talking to them about it. The sort of the polite and, and respectful thing to do is to say, like, you know, would you like a hug? May I hug you? And if someone says, you know, I'm not really much of a hugger, then, right, you accept that and you don't force a hug on them. Uh, it's, you know, a basic principle of consent, and it comes from this understanding that we should respect other people's right to determine what happens to them. They have some sort of inborn autonomy that we have uh, a moral obligation to recognize and defer to when it comes to things that are happening to them. Obviously, their autonomy does not extend to controlling other people because that would, you know, violate their forms of consent and, and so on. But, but there's a basic principle here. Um, and that's a wonderful thing. But hang on, I'm getting a phone call real quick. I'm back. The phone call was spam. I have a meeting in like 10 minutes, and I wasn't sure if that was the person I'm supposed to be meeting with, so I, I had to pause the video and, and see what was going on. Anyways, so we have this principle of consent, and then you get into initiatory spaces where consent still matters and is still really important, but there's a wrinkle. And the wrinkle is, with initiation, you take some kind of an oath of secrecy. You know, depending on the circumstance, right, I'm speaking once again from a Wiccan perspective here, but there are also you know, all sorts of initiations where upon initiation you are conferred certain secrets that are not to be revealed to other people who have not undergone the same initiation that you have. And among those, usually, is sort of the details of what goes on in the initiation proper, right? I, as an initiated Gardnerian Wiccan, am not going to disclose you know, what happens in a Gardnerian initiation. That is something that I, you know, hold as, as under the purview of the oath of secrecy that I've taken. And so, when you bring new people in, um, they are undergoing an initiation rite. They're experiencing something. Something is being done to them that they don't know the details of and therefore to which they cannot give informed consent. And so the question is, how do we uphold our value of consent, which is a really important thing, while still preserving the secrecy of initiatory traditions and understanding that there are very good religious and magical reasons for having that secrecy in place. Secrecy does a number of things, but one of the really important things is it separates the sacred from the profane, right? Keeping certain things secret puts you in a place where those things are not profaned by being exposed to people who won't take them seriously, people who aren't prepared to understand the mysteries that they reveal, uh, and also just sort of keeps them separate from everyday mundane life, right? You only talk about the secrets when you're doing the secrets, when you're doing the secret things. And those are all good and important things, and there's a value to magical secrecy. But how can you preserve magical secrecy while still preserving consent culture and making sure that you're not doing things to people that they haven't consented to? 
So, so I just have a few thoughts about this. Uh, I don't claim to have all of the answers, but it's a really interesting conversation, and it's one that I think is worth having. And the first thing I'm going to say is, you know, we, we, the people who are on the side of the secrecy and, and who are trying to figure out uh, how to bring someone in in a respectful and consensual way. There are certain things that we can't talk about, but there are certain things that we can talk about. And in particular, there are certain things that we can say up front and unambiguously, this will not be asked of you. Right? So the big one is sex. Here I speak only for, for initiatory Wicca, right? I speak only for the Gardnerian tradition because that's the only initiation that I've received. But I can say unambiguously, and I will scream it from the mountaintops until the day I die, sex is never a requirement for initiation into Gardnerian Wicca. And that's a thing that I can say up front without breaking any kind of oath. And that can sort of level the playing field a little bit. It can reduce some of the informational asymmetry, and it can bring people into an initiation with more of an understanding that there are certain things that they will not be asked to do. And I think that's really important. I think it's really, really important for gardenarians to be really upfront about the fact that sex is never a requirement for any of our initiations, right? It's it's so important that people understand we are not going to pressure them into sexual activity. And if someone is trying to pressure them into sexual activity, that's predatory behavior, and they should run. Uh, I have a whole video about this. It'll be on a card up here. Feel free to click on it. Interesting discussion. But moving on from that. So, so that's one thing, is we can say certain things that are you know, dead to rights, not a part of initiation. And that can help put people's minds at ease. The second thing is trust. Initiation requires a great deal of trust. It, um, because you're kind of going into initiation blind, you really have to pursue initiation with people you trust not to fuck you over and not to take advantage of you, and not to put you through something that's going to be harmful to you. And this is one of the reasons, you know, people talk about a year and a day of training or knowing a group prior to initiation. In reality, um, most of the time, if you are pursuing initiation with a group, you will have to know them for more than a year and a day prior to initiation. And there are a variety of reasons of that. for that. Depending on the group, you may be doing training, they may be looking for you to build certain ritual or psychic or magical skills. Uh, they may be looking to build a certain knowledge base or see you develop in some way in your, in your life. But one of the really big things, and I think something that a lot of people don't realize, is you're also looking to build mutual trust. We, as the initiators, need to trust you because we're going to give you all our secrets and we want to make sure you're not going to run off with them. But you, as the initiate, need to trust us. You need to walk into an initiation with people that you feel comfortable and safe with, people you would trust with just about anything, so that you can go into this ritual blind, not knowing what's coming, but still knowing that you're, you're safe, you're not going to be harmed, and you are with people who have your best interests at heart. And that trust takes a long time to develop, which is part of why it takes so long to get to the point of initiation, because you really need to form that bond with a group that you're with. And if anyone is deciding to offer you initiation after they've known you for two weeks, that's a red flag, because there hasn't been time for that trust to develop. And then in line with trust, in line with this idea of trust, there are certain things that people will do when that bond of trust has been established. And one of those things is a lot of groups, I can't speak for every group, but something that a lot of groups will do is they'll sit you down prior to initiation and they'll say, you know, there are certain parts of initiation that can be harrowing, right? They, they won't give you the details of which parts of the initiation can be harrowing. They're not going to pull out the script and say, like, how do you feel about line 14 here? But they're going to say, you know, initiation by its nature usually involves some kind of a test or you know, an ordeal or something that can be scary or frightening or harrowing, 
And there are potentially parts of initiation, not just in Wicca, but any sort of initiatory secret tradition, there are potentially parts of initiation that can be triggering. And so going into this, in this situation where you don't know what the initiation contains, and we do, we need you, the potential initiate, to tell us if you have any triggers, to tell us if there are certain things that you can't do, to tell us if there are things that are going to set you off or make you feel unsafe. So that we, having the information we have, can figure out how to put you through this initiation ritual in a way that is safe for you, in a way that is not going to be harmful for you, in a way that is good, and, and that does not force you into a position that you would not consent to. And unfortunately, there's still some informational asymmetry there, there's still some opacity, and some of that can't be gotten around just by the nature of the fact that there are secrets. But if you're with a group and you trust them and they trust you, and you know that they have your best interests at heart, you should be able to be upfront with them about, you know, I am triggered by X, Y, Z. And then they have that information and they can look at the initiation right. And if X, Y, Z is in the initiation right, <laughs> If XYZ is in the initiation right, they can figure out what they can do to prevent that trigger from coming up for you. And, and you have to trust them enough to be willing to share your triggers with them and to know that they're going to figure it out and that they have your best interests at heart. Um, I have more to say. I'm going to pause here because I have to go to my meeting. I will return. There's going to be a cut and you'll see me again momentarily. And I'm back. Uh, all right, give me just a moment to reconfigure my brain. Um, so there are two other things that I think are important to consider when we're talking about sort of establishing something like consent culture around magical and religious initiations. Um, and the we'll do the biggest one last. Uh, so, so first I want to say in Wiccan initiation, and I think probably very broadly in most kinds of magical or religious initiation, or even initiation into, you know, fraternal societies and things like that, um, we never ask you to do anything that we haven't done ourselves. We're never going to put you through anything that we haven't gone through. The initiation is the same for us as what it's going to be for you. And there, you know, there are some traditions or religions where that's not the same. Uh, I think Starhawk talks about you know, writing a fresh initiation for each new candidate uh, that's specifically based on their magical journey, in which case, obviously, it's not going to be the same as what your initiators have gone through. Uh, but in, in Gardnerian Wicca, at least, um, We've been through exactly what we're going to put you through. And that, you know, doesn't take away the, the potential that it can be scary and that you're going through something that you don't necessarily know what it is and that can be really uncomfortable. But it can help, I think, a little bit to allay some of the fear um, and just to, to remember that we're not going to ask you to do anything that we wouldn't be willing to do ourselves. And of course, different people have different boundaries. And the fact that I was okay with something doesn't automatically mean that you're going to be okay with something too. But once again, part of what this comes back to is having established this bond of trust, knowing your initiators very well, and hopefully understanding where your boundaries are relative to where their boundaries are and understanding that they know what your boundaries are, that you've communicated sort of the sorts of things that you can and can't do, the sorts of things you are and are not willing to do, um, and, that, and that they're sort of taking all of that and considering, once again, like, you know, I want this experience to be safe for you, I want this experience to be... Comfortable is not the right word, because initiation it should test you, initiation should be a little uncomfortable, but, but uncomfortable for you in a way that's not going to be traumatic. Um, and 
And to that, once again, right, like, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself and that I haven't done myself. Um, and I think that's an important thing to try to keep in mind. And the last thing that I want to say about consent in initiation and in initi initiatory traditions is, um, and here I can't speak for every initiatory tradition ever, I can only speak for the traditions that I come out of, uh, but you as the candidate, as the person being initiated, you get to say yes or no. You get to back out at any time, and if you're three quarters of the way through the initiation and suddenly it's too much for you and you can't handle it, you have the right to shut that shit down. Um, and depend, and, and this is a thing that, that I've seen happen before, right? Uh, there will be situations where someone will freak out partway through an initiation, and they'll stop the initiation. And then that can go one of two ways. Either you stop, you take a breath, you take some time to calm down, and then you can decide, you know what, I'm, I'm willing to go through with this, I'm ready to go through with this, I just needed a moment. Or you can say, no, this isn't for me, I want out, I want out right now. And you can stop the initiation. You have the right to do that. You have the right to walk away at any point. Um, you know, I'm, this is not giving away any secrets, but when we initiate someone in Gardnerian Wicca, before we go through with any of it, we, we have a, a real frank, you know, look me in the eye, are you sure you want to do this? And you get to say yes or no. And if you're not sure that you want to do it, you don't have to do it. And if you get partway through and you're freaked out and you're terrified and it's not what you want and you don't want to do it, you get to stop it. You don't have to follow through all the way if you are, are triggered or traumatized or if it's something that you wouldn't want to consent to. You always have the opportunity to say no. And that's something that a responsible initiator will communicate to you. Now, that said, there will also be, right, once again, initiations are meant to be a little bit harrowing and a little bit frightening. And there will be moments of discomfort that your, your initiator may say, you know, this is only a temporary discomfort. This is something we've been through before. Um, I would encourage you to see it through to the end. But the ultimate decision is always yours. And if you decide that it is too much for you and you don't want to follow through with it, you do not have to. And I think that's a really important thing to be explicit about, to bring to the fore, and to communicate clearly to people who are pursuing initiation. Um, because that's the biggest thing with consent culture, is that you have the opportunity to say no. And if you're saying no, or even if you're just not saying yes, uh, we don't go through with it. We're not going to force our initiation rights on you in a way that's going to be traumatic for you if it's not something that you are consenting to every step of the way. Um, so those are just some thoughts that I have about consent and Wicca and, and, and initiation more broadly and how to bring consent into initiation in a way that preserves the value of consent and preserves the, the mystery of initiation. Um, that doesn't single-handedly, you know, solve every question that there is about initiation and consent and things like that. I think this is a very large conversation. It's a conversation that is and should be ongoing. It's a conversation where other people are going to have more input and things that I haven't thought about or discussed here. But it's a really valuable conversation, and it's one that I wanted to have with you guys today. So this video has been going on for quite a while. I'm going to stop it there. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all soon. Bye.